Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. I don't even know what episode this is anymore of the Iron Sharpens Iron series, but as you guys know, this series is all about me bringing on people from competitors to coaches to educators, everybody who's passionate about bodybuilding, powerlifting, um, and picking their brains, getting down deep inside and understanding um, you know, what they have to contribute to you guys to help you guys become better athletes. That's kind of the whole goal of this series. You know, you get better by interacting with better people. So um, this next guest needs no introduction, but I will introduce him. It is Alberto Nunez. He is a uh, WNBF pro natural bodybuilder. He's coach for 3DMJ, which I'm sure most of you guys listening to this are familiar with Alberto. Um, and Let's see, you and I met back in, I think, 2018 at the Arnold. I think that was our first, I think it was our first time we met. I still actually, every year when the Arnold rolls around, that picture that we took together pops back up. So that's a pretty easy reminder of when we first met. And you've just been really good at staying in touch, you know, and, and interacting at Raw Nationals, the, Olymp um, the Arnold, things like that. And someone that I really look up to, and I think you have a really good wealth of knowledge uh, to bring on to the uh, listeners. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, man. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll get into many different subjects, but one will include this year's Arnold, I think, just because it's, it's part of, uh, <laughs> I guess, what, what, what's happening right now. But yeah, man, no, thank you. Thank you for that. And um, yeah, dude, like we have a good little group, I feel, and uh, we're definitely the minority, but I've seen it grow like in the last decade or so. So Quite possibly, things will look very different in like the next ten years, and a lot of it's because of you know the light work people like yourself are, are you know are I, doing so. I think we that too. I think that um, I think with especially what you guys started years ago with 3DMJ and everything, I think that's really inspired a lot of people to look into exercise science and research and do that. I mean, you know, it's something that I'm 35. I I've been. I've loved bodybuilding since I was a teenager. I was around in the magazine eras. Um, I didn't go to school for exercise science originally. Uh, I had a management degree, did personal training on the side, but I always knew I wanted to go back and do it. And that's part of the reason why I joined the army was to get, um, you know, go back to school and do all that. But I definitely think people like yourself, like Eric, um, like Lane, you know, our team and stuff, I think that there's a good group of new up and coming exercise science evidence-based coaches out there and I agree with you I think over the next five or ten years it's really going to take off I I um, graduated from USF so I, I studied under Dr. Bill Campbell and I mean the just the names of people that are he's pumping out of that program already Lauren Conlin, Stephen Bogrant, you know people like this um, there's a lot more that are coming down the pipeline so I think that like you're like you're saying over the next five to ten years there's going to be a lot of great coaches out there yeah yeah and uh yeah we'll be able to better help the people because that's that's really what it's all about at the end and and uh, we as an industry and we're trying to fight this but yeah it's 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 confusing man like we we've all been lost in those waters once or twice so absolutely you know i have a question written down here i was going to ask you later on but i think it's kind of a perfect segue here what do you think is the biggest uh miscommunication out there whether it be from a nutritional standpoint a training standpoint just an overall overall standpoint hmm. um i think the what's really underrated and and people forget about um is if you talk to most folks they all have something in their life that you know they're they're pretty good at you know or they know quite a bit about about like man i have friends who are plumbers for example and i'm like i'm like dude you are like a like I can watch them do their thing. I'm like, damn, that's like yeah. so cool how you get in there, you assess and just make it work. So everyone has something for the most part. Like I've, I've come to learn that some sort of you know skill uh, or hobby that they went a little bit too far with. And I feel like for me now that I, I'm like pretty deep into this, like whenever like I want to like you know try something else like for example backpacking is the next like adventure i want to get into and fly fishing mm -hmm. you know it's like once you kind of you you man it, it sucks to say but i'm not going to say that well i will but there's very, very few people who are really good at what they do like within you know like a, i guess 
the educational sector that's trying to yeah yeah make their money profit off like helping you know fill fill in the gaps you know when it comes to what you want to know about say fly fishing right so mm -hmm. I'll make it very wary now like but I know what to look for and I know that it's going to take a while and I know that it's um, there should be an educational component to that and and you know being good or mastering something there's really very few things there that are passive you know and I think that is people want the most passive way of getting there like whether it be take this pill um you know there's this new like workout video that you can do at home um and if you are good at something else like you realize that no no no, no man like i'm sorry but you're gonna have to do your part and you're going to have to learn and that's the only way kind of a, a lack of patience out there i mean everybody I, you know and i i actually got in conversation in that podcast that i was a guest on this morning too about that same thing and i mean you're 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 mid-30s right you're yeah. five-ish around there. 37. 37. Yeah. Okay, so you're even a couple of years older than I am. I knew you. I knew we were right around the same age there. But you know, I was asked the question, "What do I see that's different with the, the generations now?" And I was telling my story about how I got started, how I just reached out to people. I reached out to Lane. I reached out to Bill Campbell. I worked for a year for free, just helping Lane and, and volunteering in the performance lab under Bill Campbell before I was even a, a master's student. And I think that that's something that people are lacking nowadays is that ability to give before you receive. And, and I, I think that kind of leads into what you were saying there is that like people are just impatient. They want everything now. And in one sense, you know, I can't blame them because the, the job of one generation is to try to make the next generation's life easier. I really feel like that's a really big thing, but there's a difference between making it easier and giving them everything, right? Like we, if you're a parent or anything, you always want the, you want your child to have a better life than you. It, it's kind of the same concept, but I think that that has taken a very negative turn in terms of, you know, wanting the physique now, you know, wanting um, the college degree now, whatever it is, wanting the job now, wanting the money now. Um, and I think that that really rolls into bodybuilding a lot from what I see, uh, especially from inquiries I get from coaching. It's like, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. I have six weeks until vacation. It's like, okay, you know, it, this isn't a magic, this isn't a magic pill. This is a very sustainable program that we're going to run. And it's, I see a lot of it with people who want to get on stage. They don't want to kind of take the time to develop their physique. And I'm not saying you have to have a pro physique by the time you step on stage. But there's a lot of people that have been training for less than a year who want to, who think that they want to step on stage and maybe they haven't even gone to a show yet. So if you're getting an inquiry from somebody, say kind of in that same position, what's some of the advice that you tell them, a, a newbie, I guess, to bodybuilding in general? Hmm. Um, you know, I think on my end, I was probably a little bit too hesitant when it came to this. Okay. Um, like I think once I miss team uh, NPC nationals, I'm like, all right, well, next time I go up there, it's going to be with like, like the men. So I, I, I need to take my time and literally it took <laughs> man, five years, five years. So it was five years of getting ready for that. Um, but I was more than ready by the time, like I had my, my habits in place. I had had successful fat loss phases. I had had successful gaining phases. Um, so, you know, I think you just, you need to do it in a, in a, environment that's uh just a little more conducive for for learning yeah. and that's going to be outside of a, a contest prep so i yeah i definitely you know I pick i pick them apart I'm like so have you had a have you had a successful gaining phase have you had a successful fat loss phase how many of, of each if, if you have and and um and then you know go a bit like, go through their lifestyle like for example one thing that's you know a little weird for you and I is like when we see like a quote unquote regular person having a I don't know a jelly sandwich for lunch we're like that's not even a meal like it has to have protein you know so it's all these little things that like we do that uh, it's just it becomes your culture so has this become your culture and have you you know gone through each one of those important phases that's usually where I start and I like to see about three years of that before I'm like okay I think I think it's gonna break you anyways a contest prep no matter how ready you are but um, you know, it's going to be just, it's going to be a short term thing. So what was your introduction to this lifestyle that we, that you and I love, we love this, right? 
but you weren't always probably into bodybuilding, were you? It was probably a point where you're like, oh, this seems interesting. I want to give it a try. What was that? What was that transition like? And what were you doing beforehand? Um, so I loved all the other sports, but you couldn't get me in the weight room. Um, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that my, my pops did it. So you always kind of would rebel against like what your pops is doing. And he did it really well. So to me, it was like, you like, uh, it's like, you know, like, well, I actually didn't realize like LeBron James' son is like trying to do the exact same thing, but that's a hard, you know, path to, to follow. So my dad was always a small dad. So I'm like, nah. I've always was like the skinny kid. So I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good at these sports. I'll do these. But man, I went to go train with a friend this one time and um, it was just to hang out with him. Like I was like, all right, fine, we'll go do this. Signed up for like the gym membership. It was, it was relatively cheap. And it was like love at first rep. It just never had I uh, taken part in a physical activity that just felt so appropriate from the get-go. So I was hooked, man. What, what's your favorite part about bodybuilding? I, I, for an example, my favorite part is the fact that I am in control of my progress. I am in control of building what I envision in my head. Now we all know that we have limitations. There might, it might not turn out exactly like that, but everything is in my court. The ball is in my court. And I love that. What is something about bodybuilding that absolutely drives you that you love? Um, it taught me a bit, a lot about delayed gratification. Um, every other sport, like if you had a knack for it or you were a pretty good athlete, yeah. Like you could just show up and if you're highly competitive, like you could do something where it's like, okay, okay, you, that was the play of the game. Whereas like with bodybuilding is, I remember, you know, looking down the dumbbell rack and I'm like, okay, I want to get to those because those look pretty big. Yeah. But I knew that before I got to those, it's like, there's all this stuff in between the process and uh, you're going to have to, you can't just show up and, you know, like, hey, be at the right place at the right time. And that was, it was just a great life lesson for me. The, the process, just like you mentioned, I think that's, that's a really important factor for anybody listening to, to understand is that obviously we want to get on stage, we want to win, that's great. But at the end of the day, it's not up to you whether or not you win or lose. So you have to, you have to understand that going into the competition. You have to understand that during the entire contest prep and the off season where you're building and all that. You have to fall in love with the process, like Alberto said, and, and understand that every little milestone, moving up, for you, moving up maybe from the 30s to 40 dumbbells, 40 pound dumbbells, that was huge. I mean, yeah. we all know that time, you know, first time I hit a 225 bench, I was like, wow, I'm Superman, right? Which we all know yeah. that's not really that great. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and my bench really hasn't gone up much since, but <laughs> that's a whole nother point. Um, but it's that process. And the ability that every time you step in the gym, you have a focus and you have um, something that you can build on to better yourself. And, and I, I, I agree with you. I think that that's a really, really good point. Now, you did mention something about, you know, earlier going through an off season, you take a client through off season. Let's talk about yours for a second, because there's, there's very, um, you've talked about it a lot. And there's pictures out there how you went through a very extreme bulking period mm -hmm. of life. Um, probably a little bit more so, I think, than you would have liked, knowing what you know now. But let's talk about that. Someone that is a natural, because you are a, pro, a natural pro, um, that wants to put on a lot of muscle, right? We obviously know it's going to take longer than an enhanced athlete. What are some tips that you can give them that you learned from that big, dirty bulk that you did? Um, and would you do it again, knowing everything you know now? Because let's let's face it it did get you to a really good place it might have it might have been pretty hard to come down from that and everything but it did work so what are some of your advice to people that are new maybe 18 19 years old and really wanting to pack on some muscle um man like first of all those are those are the years you know um yeah. like they, they, they really are um that was perhaps a little bit hyper focused on what was that if I can go back to those years, man, I'd be, I don't have a lot of regrets in my life, but I wish I would have been a lot more focused at 18, 19 years old. You know, I was hyper focused on the, uh, the hormonal part, right? You know, but like when we look at like the hormone trends for like healthy people, it's like, oh, like it's not what, you know, there's a big spurt in your teen years for sure. But, um, 
but they hang on like, like that's that's not what makes you so great in those years it's, it's more so you're going through well part of it is you're going through those late stages of puberty i mean you take a guy that go you know is just getting into college not lifting weights and how he pops on the other side it's like oh you went from like this boy and child thing to like you know like you look like a dude now you're right so um you add weights to that it's 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 magical and your connective tissue is healthy you know so it's like Big boy thing. great times right yeah. um miss those days <laughs> yeah yeah nothing, nothing really hurt right mm-hmm. um but it, so in, in hindsight i think my plan was like you know again t- miss teen nationals um and I had a foot that just wouldn't heal. But I'm like, oh, I can still squat, lift weights. I could put weight on the leg press. I guess bodybuilding, here, here's, here, here it goes. Um, and I knew I needed, you know, like three or four years. Three or four years of just really getting at it. Um, right. Now, where I kind of goofed up is I was comparing myself to others. So I was working out at a gym with a lot of IFBB hopefuls. Um, I actually trained with, I think it was like, 2003 NPC T Nationals winner uh, Gerald Williams. So he was like my off and on training partner. Now, um, if I'm wrong, do you train at arm cross? No, because that's like that's just far enough away where it's not reasonable. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. when you started saying that, I I was immediately thinking yeah. arm wrestling because I know you're in that area, so or kind of in that area. So, but that's what my gym looked like. It looked like a mini arm wrestling. So you know, I'd see the guys about my age, and you know, they're they're like. They were, you know, 170, 180, like, you know, two years ago. And now they're like 220, 230, beyond. And I'm like, the competitive side of me is like, well, you know what? Like, I need to just do what they're doing. So I uh, I got busy with the eating. And I did whatever it took to to put on that weight. I didn't want to get left behind. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, I remember I got one <laughs> weigh-in with clothes at night uh, that was 250. And I was like, okay. I made my goal. Now I can shake this off realistically. Cause even now I gained like 10 pounds over the course of the day. I was probably somewhere in the mid two thirties, um, like morning weight. Right. right. Um, so I took it off and I think by, by the time I, I yeah, I, I got to a better place, uh, under 200 pounds. That's kind of where I belong. Yeah. Um, I was like, Oh wow. Like it looks like a pro caliber physique now, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I did get it twisted at that time. I was like, you know what? It's 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 because I got that high that I I was able to you know look like this now. But to be honest, it was uh, well. And I thought about it more. And I'm like, no, you hit PRs like literally throughout the whole fat loss phase. Like that was a lot of dead weight you were carrying. Yeah. But uh, it was the length of time that I spent just in an environment that was very conducive to to muscle gaining and, and that was three four years of that which meant hey you know there were summers where my buddies were all getting peeled and i'm just you know <laughs> over here with the black t-shirt in the pool but right. but it was it was again the delayed gratification thing it was it was worth it on the other end i'm like wow like this was this worked i guess so yeah man more than one year give yourself two years if you can three years like of, of like no fat loss phases i think you know if you're in those early intermediate phases it's like not a bad idea no and, and you you brought up a couple a uh, couple really good points one of them being uh the atmosphere that you surrounded yourself with i don't think people really fully grasp how much of a difference that can make when you have everybody thinks they train hard right yeah you know and they probably do they probably do but you never train as hard as you do when you've got someone else around you pushing you and that doesn't mean trying to do stupid amounts of weight that you're not capable of it just means that it's human nature to have that governor on yourself. And at some point you've got to realize you've got to have a buddy. You've got to have someone that is looking out for your best interest, obviously, but knows how to push that and break that governor off so that you can get to that next year. Because that is your training environment is so crucial. If you're training at, you know, in uh, planet fitness or something like that, or you go train at like powerhouse down here in Tampa or Armbrust, or any of these, you know, any of these major gyms that you guys know of um, that are known for being a little bit more hardcore, you just know as soon as you step in there, the atmosphere is completely different. You have this different mentality that comes over you, and you need that in order to push yourself the way that you need to push yourself in order to put, uh, put on muscle and stuff like that. Now, 
you mentioned that you were you saw these guys who went from like 170 to the 225 pros caliber physiques and I, I think we probably all know that that wasn't 100 percent natural and I know that you've talked about it in the past where you had kind of you had almost pulled the trigger and actually mm -hmm. use an enhancer like you bought them or something but decided not mm -hmm. to do it and all that stuff what um take me through that process as far as when you're thinking, you know, I need to do this. And then when you get it, take me through the process of like, nah, this ain't for me. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, all those, a lot of the guys that we're using, we didn't even talk about it. Yeah. We're just like, they're, you know? And, and that's a misconception. A lot of people think that everybody's talking about steroids. Nobody t nobody's taking as much as you probably think they're taking anyways, but nobody yeah. talks about it. <laughs> yeah yeah no I, it's just it just never came up and i to be honest sometimes it was like the inverse of like what you see now like if someone looks you know pretty good it's like that's the first thing people think of but uh like honestly i was probably too naive in some ways but i'm like you know what if, if he's doing it i could i could i could get myself to like 220 in solid um so that helped like i think that my, my perspective would have changed a little bit had i you know known that hey there were you know, they were taking supplements, super supplements, right? Um, but uh, but I, I didn't even think about that. I'm just like, I just got to keep up with them. You know, they've added this much. I need to add that much. Uh, so, so yeah, I know that, that, that environment, I, I, man, when I get back, I'm going to get, uh, once, once I, I'm able to go to the gym again, like that's the first thing I'm going to go. I'm going to go straight to the super, we have like a mini arm breast out here that uh, is inspired by that gym and, and it's it's quite the playground and the the environment's like very pro try hard um because yeah training in my bedroom with bfr is just you know it gets the job done but it's it's not the same um i have yeah. a couple resistance bands i've been using and like a, a pair of 10s a pair of 15s a 25 and a 35 pound dumbbell and honestly man i i snapped both my resistance bands already and then I actually had the green one is kind of, I think that's kind of like an 80 to 120 tension sort of thing. Mm. I took the half of that and I snapped that in half even. And so now I'm just like screwed. Actually, I just got done a little bit ago. You know who uh, Will Grazion is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's a friend of mine. So he's got some equipment at his office. So we went over there and hit a, hit a posterior leg day. And, um, you know, that's been nice. I've been gone over there a couple times, but man, I'm ready for these gyms to open. And I would love to get out to um, arm rust and train sometime, but your gym sounds like it's pretty much as hardcore as that one. Yeah, no, I would definitely, uh, it's called Prodigy Gym. And, and uh, yeah, no, Phil Heath was here for the opening. So that kind of tells you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. Now, where are you, where are you located in Colorado? Are you in Colorado? Um, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our north of Denver. Okay. So Fort Collins, college town. Nice, nice. I have a cousin that lives um, a little outside of Denver, so if I ever make it out there, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know, and I'm gonna drive up there and get some training in with you. Oh yeah, well, we can do arm breasts either one, but yeah, yeah, no, there's you know, you just be careful. It's a leg day. The, the altitude here does hit people. That is the one day where you're like, oh wow, like sets of eight feel a little different. Yeah. I bet, I bet, man. So let's talk about your training a little bit. Um, how has that evolved over the years? Were you, and correct me if I'm wrong, because Mm -hmm. the people I talked to our age started off like what did Ronnie Coleman do and we're going to do that or what did Jay Cutler do and we're going to do that right so how did your training how did you start training because like you said you you didn't really you weren't really into it before you just went to the gym and kind of fell in love with it after that first rep so how did young Birdo train compared to now and how did that progress um so 16 was when I I, I tried weightlifting for the first time and it felt great but I had all these other sports that I was committed to so you know it's like I'd put on some weight and then track season would start and I'd lose that weight and um so I was yeah it was it was a conflicting period but um but once I had I had a full year to you know eat enough I saw like 139 pounds on the scale and I'm like oh like that's that's uh it was peak like shape for for the running but but for everything else i was like man i'm like at that point 19 i'm like i'm a man i can't be 139 pounds right now, you know no guy wants to see one in three on a scale yeah yeah and that was evening weight as well by the way evening weight so i i was not weighing in in the morning who knows um 
so yeah, you know, it, it's, it's certainly evolved because um, I think for me, I was very insecure about my work ethic for the longest time because it was something that I severely lacked with other sports. So I was always very, um, I, I would doubt whether or not like this is actually my, like, the, the best work I could do. So what ended up happening was, you know, eventually it was, but I was like just tearing myself up. And I remember going on, uh, this is when HIT was kind of right. like really starting to be popular. I didn't do HIT per se, but um, I, I did something called Max OT. And that was um, a very, uh, I'd say it's low volume. I remember my chest day was two sets of flat, two sets of incline, uh, two sets of flies. Um, you know, the pre the compounds of press is like four to six rep range. The flies were like eight to 10, if I remember correctly. And then I had three sets of triceps, which was like, again, like somewhere in the fly rep range. That was it. Your day was over. So like literally I was done in like 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Um, but it worked really well. It worked so well. This is, so I stayed off the bench press cause I couldn't bench press 225. It was like 205 for three, which kind of puts you at the 225, like range or one RM, but I'd go in there and I'm like, this is the day and just get stapled and just get stapled. So I ran that program, which again, I think the biggest thing there was, it was very pro let's be objective here. Like we're not here to see how, how, uh, how, uh, how so we can make ourselves, you know, or how much noise we can make and how many sets you can do. Um, we're going to, it was more objective in nature from, and I needed that. I needed that badly. So fast forward, I ran it for about, I think like seven months, eight enough to, to gain weight. Yeah. And uh, I was only touching dumbbells because I was afraid of the bench, get into the, get into the bench press. Like I'm like, you know what, let's, let's, I was working up. I'm like, man, that 205 felt easy. I got a spot with 225 on it and it flew for 11 reps. So from like zero to 11. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, and I was like, whoa, this is so like weird. It's like, in some ways, these last few weeks have been much easier than what I was doing. Right. But, um, and now in hindsight, I can just tell you that, you know, it just lined up a little bit more with like the principles of, of muscle growth, you know? Um, so that got me hooked and I'm like, okay, I was doing the Arnold thing. That wasn't working. Let me kind of redirect my focus into like what, because I remember the the company that kind of tied itself in with that program, AST, was like very even their logo like Supreme Science. So yeah, I started to look around and 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 learn as much as I could about training and and I, I'd say basically from 2004 to 2008, I was doing about 50% of the things right. Um, but like 2010 and onwards, it's kind of honestly just kind of remained the same and I've just kind of let time do its thing. Um, and, and so, so yeah, no, I've, I've made my mistakes. I've gotten myself hurt. Right. Um, and, uh, and I, I just feel so glad that I think so, so, so happy for those people who are starting up now that don't have to take <laughs> some of those routes that we did literally from day one, you can kind of start training in a way that's pretty fundamentally sound. That's amazing. To yeah. Me. That's a huge asset. I mean, that's, you know, when we started, we didn't have, we, we had the internet. But I mean, we didn't have what we have now. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have the ability to see what professionals are doing and all that stuff. We just had whatever the magazines were. And, and that's why I'm trying to be very open and honest with all the mistakes I've made in the years too, because, you know, you said at the very beginning and I, I thought it was very, uh, very important to point out is that, you know, as coaches, we want to see people succeed in the, you know, the best way possible, healthiest way possible. Um, and if you really care about your clients, you, you really want to see that. And part of doing that is being honest about the things that you messed up when you were younger, because we've all done it. We've all done it. I mean, can't tell you how many times I thought, you know, CrossFit was going to make me a bodybuilder. <laughs> I, you know, just stupid stuff like that. And it's, it's those sort of things that um, I think everybody needs to go through. And, and I don't think that everybody necessarily needs to go through um, super bad times in order to learn. But I think everybody's got to have, you know, kind of that, that growing pain in their training and in their diet and stuff like that um, in order to make them into 
the bodybuilder, the coach, whatever it is that they want to be. Those, those are life lessons that are invaluable. So. Yeah, no, you, you learn from your fumbles for sure. You know, so when you do fumble it in modern day times, you're like, oh, okay, well, that kind of sucks, but I'm about to learn something really, really good, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think has been um, kind of like the biggest highlight of your bodybuilding journey? Was it, was it earning your pro card? Um, no, you know, I, I, so had I had, again, like, not an old head here mad at the current kids but like hey you have the options of like you could you know come out of high school and you're like i think i know what i want to do and it involves you know fitness bodybuilding strength um you know you can pick like your schools based off like you know what gets you to that end goal you know you want to do in some capacity so i didn't have that um so but I knew I wanted like my chunk of the pie. I just had no idea how that was going going to happen. So I think what I am, when I reflect on it, is just the fact that, um, yeah, I, I exist in this industry that I wanted to be a part of, and and have for a while now, and I'm respected by my peers. And I think that to me is uh, that 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 means. That means the world because like, you would have told me this at 16, 17, when I knew this was the thing I loved the most. Yeah. I, I I wouldn't have believed it. No way. So yeah, that's yeah. it. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I mean, I I hope that in the next 10 years, you know, I can become as respected as you are. I mean, I wouldn't. You said it perfectly. I mean, you are respected by everybody. You ask anybody about Alberto Nunez, and there's nothing but good things and respect. But you've put yourself in that position you've worked hard you have demonstrated that over the years and what you guys are doing with 3dmj is, is amazing i think you guys have helped a lot of people's lives you guys are um definitely a, a wealth of knowledge um within your team and stuff and so even just from a peer standpoint i appreciate everything that you guys put out because i learn i learn from other coaches i i i'm far from knowing as much yeah. as i want to know right and um, guys like you, like Eric, like Wayne, obviously I have in my back, you know, right here. Um, you guys are, are people that I've looked up to and I've respected for a long time. And now to kind of be on that peer level from with you guys and get to know you a little bit more on a personal level, it makes it so, so much more um, rewarding. And I just continue to learn from you all the time, man. And I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on. I know that times are tough right now. I know, uh, you know, we're all kind of struggling with stuff right now, but um, is there any last thing you want to leave anybody with? You want to tell people how to get a hold of you? I mean, I'm obviously going to leave it in the description box below, but anything you want to plug real quick? Yeah, well, thank you for, again, like letting me on, because th th that does mean that, hey, it's like, I think, you know, Bert has something to say, right? Um, and yeah, no, it just, just happens all of a sudden one day, you're like, oh, shoot, I, I guess I kind of, I've made it in a way. But at the same time, like if it's really your thing, it's like, but now I'm going to do everything I can to like keep it together because right. we've seen, seen this, man. Like something happens to like fitness professionals in their 40s. Like, I don't know. They all, they, they, they all, or your ego can become like so big that, you know, it's like, okay, it's like you kind of plateau there, you know? Um, so yeah, but thankfully, yeah, no, we're part of a big group that, you know, we won't let each other do that, you know? Absolutely. I think that was, that's, that's unique. Well, um, you no? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That was transition. Uh, oh, okay. Well, once again, thank you, man. I really appreciate you coming on. We're going to have to have you on for another segment down the road, but you just take care of yourself, stay healthy, and um, hope to meet up with you soon, man. I, I hope that these expos and stuff start happening pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. No, I miss that as much as I'm like, oh, damn it, the Arnold. But like this year, it was like, man, I could go for Arnold. So yeah, I'll definitely see you next year, my man. All right, man. Keep in touch. All right. Take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be in contact.